What's going on everyone, Tuki here, back again with some FIFA 16, and this is the start of my Liverpool career mode, as we are going to attempt to bring Liverpool back to its prior glory. I was I was thinking of just maybe picking the scout and leaving the money, we're going to pick both of them, we're just going to go for it. We're going to start off on world class, I want a decent challenge right off the bat, and that way we can bump it up to legendary if need be. We'll do five minute halves. Financial strictness, though, this is where... I'm gonna kind of balance it out. We're gonna go on moderate. Um, gonna go for do yeah, gonna go for the dollars. Latest custom roster, European competition. Now this is going to be interesting. Hopefully it puts us straight into the Euro League as it is, and it does, including the matchup against Scion. So that's good. It's nice to actually have the realistic Champions Cup and Euro League draws as you do. And this was my other big debate the summer transfer window and I'm going to disable it now this might be that might be a little bit frowned upon I'm not quite sure this being my first FIFA career mode but with the rosters I want to see since obviously the roster update has you know the realistic loans the realistic transfers I want to see how that actually affects the league in game so that's what we're gonna go with alright guys so here we go and let's see what we are invited to. And we get invited to a couple of really, really big tournaments. You know what, guys? We are actually going to go for the slightly weaker of the tournaments. Baby steps here. You can't just jump into rebuilding a dynasty. you got to take baby steps. And we are going to take baby steps going for the Champions Trophy. Let's take a look at our inbox really quick as we get a message about the tournament we just accepted in Chile. During the group stages of the competition, you will be facing Besiktas, San Lorenzo, and Catalica. Domestic Cup, they want us to reach the final. I'm not sure how <laughs> not sure how well that's going to go over, but we'll see. And as far as our league objective, they want us to qualify for Champions League, a top four spot. A fair and potentially realistic expectation. We'll have to see how that goes. Now the reason why I disabled the first transfer window is I don't want to be cheap about this and I also want your feedback on who we should get. Now I want to keep it somewhat realistic. Anybody can go on SoFIFA, look up the top potential players, bring them in, and turn their team into a dynasty. Obviously I'm sure we will acquire some of those players, but I want this series to be interactive. I want everyone to be involved because I'm not sure which direction to take this team. Obviously looking at the team, now, Simo Mignolet as our starting keeper, only a 78 overall, Adam Bogdan as our backup keeper. Now I normally prefer to have the starting keeper, your backup keeper, and your project keeper. So I've definitely, Adam Bogdan's most likely going, perhaps we'll keep him around after January, maybe he will be our backup keeper. Simo Mignolet though, between now and January it's going to be very telling. We will definitely be scouting out some potential starting goalkeepers, Jesper Selesen from Ajax is a big potential target for us. Right backs, we're obviously pretty much set. We have Nathaniel Klein, 81 overall. He is a solid player. John Flanagan is still there. Um, expiring contract in 12 months, but he can still play a left back and right back. A very valuable player to have, very diverse player to have. Still 22 with some decent potential. Andre Wisdom loaned out to Norwich. Martin Skirtle, 81 overall. And let me just say that is uh, that is not a very flattering picture, but he is our anchor. He is what is going to hold our defense together. He is going to be here for the long haul, more than likely. Mamadou Sacco, also 81 overall. And let me just say, right now, Lovren is the odd man out. You know, I'll take a look at all of our center backs here, and we have a ton of them. Lovren's the odd man out. He is definitely going to be riding the bench. Maybe, maybe I'll have him in every once in a while. But for more, more than likely, he's going to be in the second team. Sacco and Skirtle, we absolutely have to roll with him. Look at Sacco, 90 strength. The guy is an absolute monster. Colo Torre as well, just for signing a contract. It is only for one year. We may sell him in January. He doesn't have, despite him still being a 78 overall and still being a valuable player, there, he's not going to be around for the long haul. Left back. Now, this is interesting. Alberto Moreno only a 77 overall this year. We have the new boy Joe Gomez as well at 67. 76 for a long time player Jose Enrique and Alex O'Hanlon are 
another our new prospect again another new prospect for Liverpool in this game we're definitely it's it's going to be interesting I'm not sure I want to hold on to Moreno Lord knows everybody knows he turned into an absolute beast on FIFA 15 I believe the max I ever saw him at was a 91 overall in one of my career modes so we definitely want to hold on to him but the question is do I perhaps maybe want to move him up into the midfield or actually use him as a left wing back as he prefers to be in real life and then maybe put Joe Gomez there and let him run at left back in a whenever we do run a four defender set. That's going to be another one of the questions is how do we want to use Alberto Moreno? And if we decide to use him as a midfielder or a permanent left wing back, should we go out and get a pure left back? CDM, and again, we're in a very good spot here. Emery Chan, 75 overall at only 21 years old. And Lucas, 28 at 79 overall. In real life, Lucas has been spectacular for Liverpool, and he's still a decent player to have. Lazar Markovic, unfortunately, we will not have at our disposal this season, obviously on loan to Fenerbahce, which is a shame. I'd love to be able to use him, but I'm not going to cheat it. I'm going to let him stay out there for the year, and we'll bring him back next year, and hopefully he makes good progress. Center mids, obviously we have the new addition, James Milner, the $19.5 million acquisition. He has a very well-rounded card, a strong defensive card, and that's going to be the key to our midfield is strong defenders with a great passing game and we have that in spades a one-two punch between James Milner and Jordan Henderson our captain Joe Allen there as well a 77 overall not a bad guy to have on the bench Adam Phillips a 17 year old prospect and Jordan Rossiter 18 years old and I'm really interested again to see how Jordan Rossiter progresses unfortunately he didn't have the highest of potentials last year hoping it's bumped up a little bit as he made a couple of appearances for Liverpool lately. Shihei Ojo on loan to Wolves, another guy we will definitely be keeping our eye on, and hopefully he progresses as well. Cam position, Phil Coutinho, and I think my main goal of this series is hold on to Coutinho for as long as possible. Every time I've had Coutinho in career mode, he eventually gets homesick and we have to sell him. He needs to be the centerpiece of this team, 84 overall at 23 years old. Of course, we do have Roberto Firmino as well, 82 overall at 23 years old, another great player. Adam Lallana as well, kind of playing, you know, kind of the odd man out between those two, but we're going to try and use Lallana to the best of our ability. Sturridge, our main man, 83 overall at 25 years old. We have Christian Benteke as well, and my plan is to hopefully keep these two together. Christian Benteke, I absolutely love having him. My final career mode on FIFA 15, I moved him over to Liverpool. I had a pretty accurate representation of all the real life moves and he has been he is an absolute beast 82 jumping 92 strength a monster in the air and hopefully we can get him the proper service that Liverpool and real life have been struggling to do Divock Origi again he is hopefully the storage replacement 76 overall at only 20 years old a spectacular card but we have Danny Ings as well also a 76 at 22 we have just a great selection of strike Having Sturridge and Benteke is great, and then having Origi and Danny Ings to essentially be the second team and to come off the bench, it's going to be huge for us. Mario Balotelli still an 80 overall on loan to AC Milan, and the odds that I keep him, if it was up to me, I would sell him flat out. But whoever you know finds this series and becomes involved with this series, I'm leaving it up to you guys. What do we do with Mario Balotelli in January? Or... Do we, or do we wait until next year, next summer, and deal, with, and deal with it then? I will leave that up to you guys. One quick thing I wanted to address, despite taking the extra money at the start of this career mode, I'm going to hold off at least a year before starting up with the youth staff. I want to use real-world players more often than not, rather than just going through the academy, getting a gem immediately, and having him take a spot away from somebody who could potentially deserve it more, or at least who I want to use more. I do prefer to use real players in the first couple of seasons, but eventually we will get to that youth staff and the youth academy. Another quick subject I want to touch on are the scouting instructions and free signings in January. I am going to do them, however, there is only going to be one free signing per January window, just to keep it fair. I don't want to be... I don't want this series to be, oh, Ronaldo and Tony Cruz are both available. Let's sign them in for free and immediately make us better. Again, I want to keep this somewhat realistic. Anybody could do that. So one signing 
Otherwise, we're just looking for promising players and first team world class players who we will acquire naturally. Simming the next day, and as we are taking part in the EuroLeague, the board wants us to win the Europa League. And again, I'm not sure how well that's going to go, but we will find out. Fingers crossed. So getting into the first training session, guys, and we are actually going to pretty much simulate all of this just to keep it nice and quick. And for this first week, we're going to keep it limited to just our prospect players that are still on our roster. Again, most of our prospects have been loaned out. The ones we don't have here, though... We are mainly going to use the training for them. Guys like Divock, Origi, and Danny Ings, they're going to be getting plenty of play time for us. So we might as well use the training to keep these guys happy and quiet, hopefully. Let's see what happens. Not very good. <laughs> Not a very good success rate. Jerome Sinclair gets a B, and the rest struggled. And Polgar really struggled. All right, guys, so here we go. A quick look at the first team for this game against San Lorenzo, and we've gone with mainly a secondary team and in honor of Brendan Rodgers, a 4-3-3, because why not? Jordan Ive, Danny Ings, and Divock Origi up front. Emery Chan, Jordan Rossiter, and Joe Allen. Actually, we're going to swap those guys, so they're actually just in their plain natural position. We have O'Hanlon, who requested the play, so why the hell not? Joe Gomez, Colo Torre, and John Flanagan with Mignolet in net. On the bench, Jerome Sinclair, Jack Dunn, Adam Milana, Lucas Leva, Lovren, Enrique, and Adam Bogdan. Let's get in to our first game. All right, guys, here we go. The first game of the tournament against San Lorenzo. Fortunately, not too much happened in here, so just a couple of quick highlights. Let's get to it. Due to the weekend lineup, stepping up to take the free kick, Colo Torre. And it's a great strike. Just saved a magnificent save by San Lorenzo's keeper. I, I could not believe <laughs> Colo Torre got off such a magnificent free kick. Had it not curled so much, I think it easily would have gone in. A great save. But off the ensuing corner, we play it short. A terrible cross is knocked down right on the foot of Colo Torre, who slams it home. 1-0. A magnificent way to start this game. Gotta love the new camera celebrations. Colo wearing the captain's band and just very lucky. A very lucky bounce to end up on the foot of Colo, but an even better finish. This time we have another free kick, and it's Jordan Rossiter crossing it in right onto the head of Emery Chan, who sneaks it past the keeper. 2 0 early on in the first half. So, again, guys, that is it. Absolutely nothing happened in the second half. We just had to essentially. Park the bus and ride out the game, but it was an easy win, 2-0 victory in our first game. So that is it for now, guys. Let me know down in the comments below. Again, I want to know what you guys think of disabling the summer transfer window. What should we do in January? Should we get rid of Mario Balotelli? Who should we go after? Who should we look to acquire? All of this I want to know. I want input. I want feedback from all of you guys. Let me know what we should do with this first career mode series on FIFA 16. In the next episode, we will be finishing up at least the group stage of this early preseason tournament, our games against Catalika and Besiktas coming up next. But again, that is all for now, guys. If you've liked what you've seen, feel free to leave a like down below. If you feel like subscribing, I encourage you to do so as well. And I will catch you all next time.